Hey everyone, uh, we're going to be talking about the Switch Pro, or is it more correct to call it the Next Gen Switch? Very interesting uh, conversation here coming from Bloomberg. But before we get into that, I want to remind you to enter our Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles remastered giveaway for the Nintendo Switch and or PlayStation 4. Uh, to enter, all you need to do is comment down below, like this video, uh, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon. Also, hey, can we get this video to 200 plus likes? I know we can do it. Come on, let's just let's just smash the, the hell out of that like button. Hey, in addition to that, if we hit 50,000 subscribers before November 1st of 2020, we will be giving away a PlayStation 5, an Xbox Series X, or a Nintendo Switch. All right, let's get into uh, the news here straight from Bloomberg. Let's not waste any more time. All right, so as you see here, uh, this is in the technology section of Bloomberg. Uh, Nintendo plans for an upgraded Switch console and major games for 2021. So it's kind of a double whammy here. We got major games and an upgraded Switch console. Uh, this is by Takahashi Machizuki, who has been proven to have connections inside of a Nintendo manufacturing and all that jazz. So he's one of the uh, top guys that was, has been reporting on a, an upgraded Switch for quite some time, even though it hasn't arrived just yet. Um, and as you can see here, it's a little screenshot just showing different models and, and colors of Switch. All right, so it says, Nintendo Company plans to debut an upgraded model of Switch console next year. Along with a lineup of new games, people familiar with the matter said, seeding 2020's holiday spotlight to rival devices from Sony Corp and Microsoft Corp. So this kind of uh, backs up the idea, anyways, that Nintendo is not going to have much this holiday. I'm not saying they won't have a holiday game, but they're not really pushing holiday 2020 really hard. I think... Uh, I've mentioned this before, Nintendo potentially might just ride the momentum they've had all this year, and then as that momentum dies out, heading into 2021, then they just start hitting us with banger after banger. I've talked about this before, potentially having a new game coming out every single month, that matters. Anyways, uh, the specifications for the new machine have yet to be finalized, though the Kyoto-based company has looked into including more computer uh, computing power and 4K high-end graphics. People briefed on the strategy told Bloomberg News asking not to be identified because it's private. Nintendo faces stiff competition for gamers' attention this fall, with PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X set to arrive for the shopping season. Let me read that again. The Kyoto-based company has looked into including more computing power and 4K high-end graphics. That doesn't sound like a pro, folks. That sounds next-gen. Let's get into this. The release of the upgraded switch will be coupled with or followed by a slew of games from nintendo itself and related outside studios the people said those games would address a wide range of players from casual gamers seeking small doses of escapism to more devoted fans putting in marathon gaming sessions the focus on next year's pipeline explains nintendo's relatively quiet software release schedule so far this year the people said the gaming giant has seen record sales, Animal Crossing New Horizons, blah, 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 uh, struggle to keep up with demand. Yeah, so that's that, that. That's really the big stuff here. So let's just go over this uh, one more time. These two paragraphs right here, these are, these are what matter. This is the, the crux of everything. The specifications for the new machine have yet to be finalized, though the Kyoto-based company has looked into including more computing power and 4K high-end definition graphics the release of the upgraded switch will be coupled with or followed by a slew of games from nintendo itself and related outside studios these games would address a wide range of players from casual gamers seeking small doses of escapism to more devoted fans putting in marathon gaming sessions and the focus on that pipeline is why they have been relatively quiet this year holy crap think about what Takahashi just put out here, Machizuki, whatever he would what, think about what he just put out there. He just put out there that the Nintendo Switch that's coming next year, this rumored Switch Pro or whatever that's coming, this reported Switch Pro from a Taiwanese newspaper is actually, essentially, a next gen Nintendo Switch. Next gen. Now, I want to kind of explain how this can work because there's going to be some fear about a next gen switch so early i understand the fear i get it i get why people are worried because we've only had the the og switch for three years switch life for like a year and people are going to be all how the hell could they be doing a next gen already when switch is just banging and balling because i was thinking the same thing just yesterday how the heck would it be a next gen switch you know why why, why would they do that 
Well, let me explain to you how this works. See, I have talked in the past about Nintendo doing a strategy with Switch that to me makes a lot of sense. It is the cell phone strategy where you release a new model or the next gen version, etc., of your product more often, say every three years, three to four years. And in doing that, it doesn't actually full stop replace the old product, but it does what the old product does, but does it better. Does that make sense? And does it better in a way that's more significant than say uh, a minor bump in power, like a new 3DS or whatever. So a next gen switch could launch next year, but all the games that come to it could still be coming to the original switch. Does that make sense now? So basically everything would be backwards compatible with the original switch, but it would be like best played here. So think about it like Xbox game pass. So Xbox game pass, at, at least as far as we're aware right now, is officially announced for the, and the, the first year of the uh, new uh, of the Xbox series X and uh, the Xbox one coexisting for that first year all exclusive games that come out on game pass will be available to play on xbox one or xbox series x so what it is is it's best played on xbox series x but also exists on the original xbox one platform not just the xbox one x the xbox one the og big fat vcr console so if nintendo does a strategy like that then it doesn't actually replace it it doesn't force people to upgrade but the upgrade is there if people want it and now i want to be clear here we're not getting a native 4k switch i know it mentions 4k more computing power and 4k high definition graphics that's reference to dlss 2.0 which has already been rumored to be in the works for the next nintendo system anyways because someone was hired in, at nvidia for the next tegra chip that was going to feature dlss 2.0 which is only exclusively in nvidia cards right now in the rtx series of cards so uh, that also kind of said, oh, there could be ray tracing and stuff in, in the next gen switch as well. So what we're kind of looking at here is that if this next gen switch is a thing, or even if it, even if they call it a switch pro, but it's basically next, next gen specs, we're talking three, four, five, six teraflops, something crazy on the go, which can be done by the way, the technology exists to do it at a, a power um, at, at a watt draw that would still be similar to what the current switch has. The technology does exist out there. Uh, we're talking about a system that not only could easily be able to play next gen games, you know, from third parties at 1080p, 720p, etc. We're talking about a system that with DLSS 2.0 could output a form of 4K that would be indiscernible to most people. DLSS 2.0 is a very, very interesting software technique. Uh, that takes advantage of RTX cores and creates a very, a very realistic looking upscaling effect uh, that is indiscernible to most people. Uh, it is one of the best ways to get 4K visuals while only outputting, say, a 1080p image. So that native image might be 1080p, but the upscaling and, and the work put into DLSS 2.0 is so great that most people can't tell the difference between native 4K and the DLSS 2.0 output of 4K. Uh, so this is really, really exciting stuff. And currently, uh, AMD doesn't actually have anything uh, that does what DLSS 2.0 does. However, they are working on their own version uh, that does something similar, but right now they don't. So this is like an NVIDIA exclusive technology. Uh, so yeah, you could understand why the other systems would be pushing power, 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 because they, they want to try to hit that native 4K. Whereas Nintendo can actually get something comparable without having to have that same compute power in the system now they're gonna have to increase ram four gigs isn't enough need eight minimum uh there's phones out there with 12 for crying out loud so i don't think it's unrealistic to expect a doubling of ram obviously you're gonna need more storage at least 64 gigs i, w I would rather see it go to 128 minimum but nintendo is gonna cheap out somewhere and i want to expect I, you know with, with them probably still supporting micro sd storage i expect it to probably only be 64 gigs in storage if this is true if, if nintendo's really truly releasing a significantly more powerful system let's at least double what the current switch is, is at the moment uh then we have to start looking at the real possibility that other things will be upgraded as well are we going to have a better screen or is it going to be 1080p on the go instead of 720p it's going to be a glass screen instead of a plastic screen etc cetera, etc cetera. what's the price point going to be are they going to be targeting 399 is it possible that you know this 
Switch could coexist with the other Switch where they leave the OG at $299. This is the premium version for $399. Uh, is this going to confuse the market? That's a whole other thing they can do. Will the market be confused by having another Switch model? Because you already have the OG Switch, which they don't really make anymore. They replaced it with the red model Switch, the red box Switch back there. That's the Switch I'm rocking right now uh, that has better battery life. Uh, that's basically the only advantage you see out of it at the end, end consumer is a little bit better battery life. Um, that's like the only Switch model they make anymore in terms of the OG model of Switch. And then you have the Switch Lite, uh, and then all of a sudden you'd have this. Now, we've seen Nintendo have a bunch of different models in the marketplace before. We have obviously seen it just with the 3DS. You know, we had the 3DS. We had the 3DS XL. We had the new Nintendo 3DS. The new Nintendo 3DS XL. It's already four different models right there. Uh, plus the 2DS and the 2DS XL. So six different models of 3DS existed. We saw it with the DS. We've seen them do it with a lot of their handhelds. You know, Game Boy had Game Boy Pocket, right? You had the OG Game Boy, Game Boy Pocket, Game Boy Color, right? Those are the three that I can think of off the top of my mind. Like when Nintendo ha is dealing in the handheld space, having multiple models and versions that are more powerful than each other and, and, and different form factors. Remember the, like the GBA you had the, the freaking Game Boy Micro for crying out loud. Like there's been so many, um, and another on the SP and all, like, there's been so many different uh, versions of these platforms of the year, this it doesn't really seem inconceivable. What, what's interesting is the power bump because if we're talking 4K, even with the LSS 2.0, it has to have RTX cores to do the LSS 2.0 to even get 4K. And RTX cores aren't anywhere near that 2015 Tegra chip. It has to be a brand new Tegra chip to pull this off. Now we know Nintendo and Nvidia do have a 10-year partnership. We know we don't know if it's been extended at this point. It very well might have been. Uh, and we know that they've been hiring for a new Tegra chip. And right now, Tegra chips are basically used in Nintendo Switches and then car navigations and, and like, you know, as like the, the main backbone behind, uh, you know, the computers that are in people's cars. Uh, so that's been something they haven't really penetrated much else of the market. There's also the NVIDIA Shield TV as well, which they've been kind of reiterating on that for a while. Uh, probably time to start looking to a new version of that in certain countries like China, where it actually is decently popular. So, yeah, I honestly think that this is perfect um for what nintendo has going it'll be interesting to see how the marketplace uh reacts it's gonna be interesting to see how you guys react like are you guys worried are you thinking about buying a switch and now you're like oh wait this pro model's gonna i mean you know you know me the robo jans over here I'm, I'm day one getting that damn pro model next gen model whatever they decide to call it switch two whatever the hell it is it's also a different strategy for nintendo they have traditionally waited until the console has been milked like to the umph degree and the sales are almost flatlined before releasing a new platform. Uh, they did that with Wii and we saw that it didn't work out well for Wii U. Uh, they did that with GameCube. Ended up not mattering because Wii was a completely different direction. Wii U tanked, so they cut it short, brought Switch out. Uh, it'll be interesting to see releasing a, mo a new model that's significantly more powerful uh, in the midst of the Switch being at the height of its own popularity. It's a very interesting move, uh, but this is a different Nintendo. This isn't Satoru Iwata's Nintendo anymore. This is Shintura Furukawa's Nintendo. He's a businessman. He doesn't want to see the sales momentum Switch have keep going and then die out and die out and slowly die a slow death over the next two, three years. Uh, he wants to see it continue to go. And we've heard that the Switch is a family of systems, which would suggest to me that Nintendo was planning to do this all along, that they were going to do these every three, four year significant upgrades. And there might not ever be a Switch 2 per se. It could be a Switch Plus or the Switch Plus 2 or what? Like they, they could just literally keep reiterating on the switch but just making more powerful versions to just keep going until the marketplace tells them hey you know what we don't really want this kind of platform anymore uh which it hasn't happened to phones yet people still want these new minor alteration more powerful phones every single year so every three to four years people might want new more powerful switches uh that have slight upgrades here and there maybe better joy cons maybe better this still compatible with all the old accessories as well all that jazz so it'll be interesting to see what happens all i know is i can't believe in August of 2020, we're already talking next gen switch with like a legit outlet reporting on 4K. It's crazy. All right, folks, I'll catch you guys in the next video.